tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! When the lights go Hi everybody, down, the welcome to another up. episode of when The Ultimate Fighter here on AfterBuzz TV. I'm Suri Serrano and joining us from Florida uh, in a few minutes is Mr. Nate Coy of American Top Team. So First, forced. let me introduce you my co-host. Mr. J Tan. What's up, lady? How are you? Hey, we are holding it down here. We're missing a couple people. It's just the two of us, and I got two things to say. One, thank God we got rid of the weak links. <laughs> Woo! Oh, now we can shoot through the roof with the YouTube views here. That's one. <laughs> Number two, I wanted to say, look at this room. King of the castle. King of the castle. Do this, do that. Do this, do that. <laughs> oh, Why? My God. Because anybody that can come up, actually, the first YouTube comment that can come up with the uh, movie reference for that. Free University of MMA t-shirt. I'll send it out to Ooh. you as soon as possible. Yeah. Oh, I love and it. And if Nate Coyne knows that one, then maybe uh, maybe him as well. Maybe he'll get lucky as well. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, so <laughs> really quick, Jared is not with us this week, and Alexis is a little bit run down, so nope. they will be back with us next week. Um, let me introduce you our guest. Nate Coy is joining us. Thank you so much for, for uh, being available, and we're very excited to speak to you tonight. Yeah, it's great to be back with you guys again. And I don't know that movie, man. It sounds like a... <laughs> Good, you saved me a t-shirt. <laughs> you don't know it. I bet you do know it. Jay said said what it was, but... Oh, did he? Yeah, I'll have to wait, though. You don't want to ruin it quite yet, right? No, yeah, no, we'll, no. We'll, we'll see who you. comes up with it on uh, <laughs> on the YouTube chat here. Well... Let's um, you know. Let's get into this week's episode. I can't mm -hmm. believe it's episode ten already. Only a couple more left. I mean, the We're season has stretch here. It's home stretch, right? Mm -hmm. So they uh, obviously chose Nate Coy, and the Black Zillions went with Baby Monster. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the weigh-ins, right? When yeah, Nate, let's go to the weigh-ins, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> let's discuss that for a second. Glenn calling out Dan mm -hmm. and having, you know, two fighters supposedly uh, cutting weight as well. What, what what was that like, Nate, in that? Was it as tense as it appeared on camera? I'm actually surprised we were talking about this. this during this <laughs> episode, I thought it would be the last. I, I'm just surprised by the drama this created. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, it was tense because I think at this point, yeah, we're we're uh, we're getting our butts handed to us, and uh, we got to make a switch here. We have to, you know, we have to be better, do better, and uh, I think that was the final straw. That just Glenn overreacting on something as minute as that, and uh, yeah, so. Yeah, it's um, of course reality TV. You know, you, part of the formula is making mountains out of molehills. Right. And, yeah. And uh, I, I think that's always that's certainly been the case with, uh, um, who was it? Uh, Steve Carl uh, coming close on weight, missing by a half right. pound or a quarter pound, and you got to come back an hour, uh, an hour or so later. Right. Um, I'm really yeah, curious. That, that's, there's some truth in that one. I understand where that all came about. This one was a whole other level of surprise, yeah. though. Yeah, but it's certainly, you know, missing, cu coming over by a quarter pound or a half pound is is it not really that big de a deal. It's not going to, uh, it's not like Anthony Johnson in the past or, you know, I'm trying to think of sure. whoever else, you know, comes in like major Kelvin Gasolum recently, you know, been having problems. But um, that's that's a separate thing. Mm -hmm. A quarter pound, you've got that hour by by regulatory law. To, to go, you know, an hour, sometimes it's two hours to go cut it, and you come back and everything is fine. Yeah. But we need storylines here for the TV show, so, you know, you, sure. you do that. <laughs> I'll help you. Yeah, and, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to, to ask you about in terms of the, the process for weigh-ins. Um, certainly, I, I know how, how things go on, you know, an average pro show day before weigh-ins. Uh, we do day, uh, day of weigh-ins for, for my amateur shows uh, here mm -hmm. in L.A., but in this case, I, I still felt like there's something, um, 
certainly with the whole idea about you guys, about people not knowing who they're fighting until weigh-ins, that when that guy steps forward, um, the commission knows, obviously. You guys know who is fighting from your team. They know, the uh, Black Zillions know who's fighting from that team. Um, I would think that it would be pretty commonplace in a situation like this, strategically, team versus team, uh, having a couple guys looking like they're going to, like they've been cutting weight and you know maybe having the sweat, got the shades on and the hoodie up and stuff like that. Was that something that, that you or both sides were doing on a regular basis? And, and I would think that that's something also for, uh, just for a fighter cutting weight. You don't want to be the only guy doing that, right? Is he still Or there? maybe you do. He's thinking about it. Nate, you, can you hear us? Do we Did got you, man? No. Did we lose him? Marissa, I think we might have some technical difficulties. Yeah. Uh, we'll get him back in a, yeah. in a well, second. Let's, let's step back it is and, a good question. Yeah. Let's set the stage here. You know, coming into this show, it's, it's funny. It's aptly noted do or die. Right. And well, it was. AT&T I mean, needed to do on this one or they were mm -hmm. going to die. And I think that's yeah. that's going to be the stakes that they're facing for the next two. Uh, we have two more episodes well, to go. Certainly, they're setting it up to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot's on the line. If they don't win next week, it's done. Yeah, yeah. There is. It's funny how at the the second half of of the season, you know, somebody always starts to pull ahead. That dark horse goes. All right, you know. Yeah. Time to pull it. And now we've got a show, you know. No, for sure, it's gotten a lot better in the last few weeks. It's been building and building and building. Mm -hmm. I think some of the best fights have been in the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's when we first started the show, we were talking about how it was going to be different. How were things going to be uh, affect the teams and the matches and the yeah. point system? Early on in, it's kind of interesting because you had points only, uh, or each match was only twenty five points, mm -hmm. and you had this huge. You had a long line of matches still to go, so. The, the field was wide open. Mm -hmm. But now as we're deeper into it, those matches are done. The points are on the board. And Black Zillion's been killing them. What was it? It was Going 300 to 100, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, you, I, I realized, me personally, it's kind of in a retrospect that um, you, the stakes are, are that much higher now because of it. Um, a lot of money's on the line. And these fighters, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. these fighters, uh, most of them don't make very much money. Yeah. They train day after day, month after month, year after year. They have fa a lot of them have families. You can mm -hmm. see on the show that a lot of these guys have children and How spouses. How do you? I, I see. I'm looking at my notes. Three hundred thousand for the 12, 12 episode series, and then isn't it two hundred? And then three hundred for the finale. Oh, maybe it is two. It's five hundred thousand dollars total. total. Yes. And I'm very curious to hear how that gets split up. You know. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, hopefully, it's not given to by, by Reebok. I mean, or maybe a lot. I shouldn't have said that. that it, makes, it, makes the <laughs> it makes the finale pretty, uh, that happens on July 12th in mm -hmm. Vegas, pretty exciting and a lot of pressure on both of those fighters oh, yeah. because yeah. that's a lot of money mm -hmm. for a lot of their teammates. Now, right? we've heard that two two matches, correct? So we, far, the buzz is that yeah. two matches will go down from the from the tough right. series, the season 21, but that could change. Don't okay. quote me on that. Okay. No, I... I I think I remember hearing Dana say it in some interview that the coaches will get to pick one match and then he'll pick one. Right. Um, Which I like. I like that. Yeah. But it also sets up for one and one. You mm -hmm. know, like we could come out in a come out of this event in a stalemate. You know, <laughs> there's a million ways that this could go. You know, and there's also a split decision versus a KO or two unanimous decisions. Yeah. You know, it's. I don't know. I, I think there could still be a couple of uh, a couple matches, ATT versus Black Zillions, that they put on uh, on the the Sunday event, you the twelfth, the finale. You yeah. think they're going to add more than two? Possibly. They certainly could. They're leaving, and this has happened actually in in the past with other uh, uh, Ultimate Fighter episodes, mm -hmm. where they don't announce the card until to the public at least until uh, until the far. the very la like the night after the last episode, and then you see all of these matches that. Have already been uh, set, you know, and they're between yeah. uh, between the two teams. Well, we're not far off from that. That's mm -hmm. that's going to be what is that? That's it's like, like two weeks. I think. Yeah, not even. Yeah. Right, less than two weeks away. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We will know that who's week, fighting. That week is going to be so insane. With I know. There's guys. so many. Hey, Nate, can you hear us? Are you back? Yes. No. Maybe so. I guess not. Marissa's still our our producer's still working on it. No worries. We'll Lots get of back. connection. Yeah. Um, you know, I was noticing it. I wonder if that was in the same room that he was in uh, last time. Looked like his daughter's room. Maybe that's where the good Wi-Fi connection is. <laughs> I, we funny. saw it, guys. We saw, I don't know if you could I, see it online. I thought he was in the kitchen before. 
Was it the kitchen? Maybe. I don't remember a dollhouse. I house. don't remember. Oh, you do? Yeah, there was You're a dollhouse, and we didn't get a chance to, to oh. bust his chops about it. <laughs> and this one, we saw there was, you know, animal stickers on the wall and stuff like that, at least from what I could see here. So, so. Well, while we're waiting for him, really quick, um, for those mm -hmm. of you that are tuning in, uh, obviously you can find us on AfterBuzzTV.com, but you can also find us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Um, and then one way that we love to hear from you is by podcastone.com. If you go to podcastone.com and fill out um, a survey for us, it's a really quick, brief survey. It really helps us. You, we, we read all of your comments and um, take everything into consideration. It helps us, and uh, it only take a few minutes out of your time. So please, again, go to take the survey at podcastone.com. Um, I think we're still working on, on grabbing Nate. Nate, are you there? You. Yeah, ah, yeah. Yay, we hey, can man. hear you. Welcome back. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Jay, Jay, I don't know if you heard Jay's question, but he had a question about um, the weigh-ins this week. And Jay, mm -hmm. what was your exact question for him? Um, well, I was curious just about the, generally the procedure with, uh, with cutting in a scenario like this where there's a little bit of strategy and element of surprise uh, and, and also... Generally speaking, you know, I would think that a team, I remember from my high school wrestling days, cutting alone sucked, was just the worst when you're the only guy suffering. Yeah. So I, I would think as a team, you know, as unified as, as you guys are, certainly there, there was probably a few guys cutting and, and keeping you going, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're in the final week. There's eight, there's four fights left. Uh, four guys on each team are going to fight. That means four guys aren't really doing anything. It just makes right. sense, you know, to help encourage your teammate, get mm -hmm. on the scale, have a partner to cut weight. And it's as simple as it was, you know. Yeah, that's another but thing. The whole, the whole day is an element of surprise. You step on What's the difference? I, I just didn't get where Glenn Beep was in the whole situation. and Yeah. Whatever. There's, I'm sure, plenty of excuses he, he'll come up with, you know. Why did they show in this episode they they aired that um, they were just going to do the weigh-ins at ATT versus going over to Black Zillions? Were you guys already shooting at ATT, and that's why production decided to stay and shoot the way the weigh-ins there? I didn't get that. And they well, you, as you cut weight, you have 24 hours uh, to recover, and so the first day of the fight we had Steve Call fighting, and uh, that fight was in our gym. Well, 24 hours. Prior to the next fight, which ended up being me and Big Monster, um, that weigh-in was at the gym because 24 hours before the fight was mm. we're getting ready to fight, have Steve Carl fight. So the weigh-in gotcha. just coincidentally was at our gym because we had the fight there. They were going to do a mock weigh-in at Mike Williams' gym, but the, that day of my fight was just pandemonium. You know, there's just so much going on in the last five days of filming that just wasn't possible. So there were two weigh-ins done? Uh, there was going to be a mock weigh-in right before our fight, like just yeah. to jump on the scale and kind of mock it. But, you know, the, thankfully we didn't do that because by the time we got to their gym, I had an hour, hour and a half to fight. Why would I no. want to spend that hour and a half, you know, taking 10 minutes out to do a mock weigh-in? Mm -hmm. Sure. Know? Makes sense. Yeah. Um, so that's how that all came about. I've, I've always been wondering throughout this whole thing, you guys, uh, wh what is it like at those weigh-ins when, you, uh, when you're not sure who's going to step out? Is it, was it easy for you uh, or, or not so much to, to figure out which guy was, was going to step out and fight from the other team? Yeah, that's the whole thing, too. I didn't care. You know, I mean, yeah. it didn't matter at that point. I had to win no matter who they put in front of me. So if they had two guys uh, going to cut weight, I was going to fight one of them because I, I didn't know out of eight who I was going to fight. So why would I care if two guys cut weight? You mm -hmm. know I mean? And in the house, you know, I just didn't pay attention to any of that. You yeah. know, I just, it wasn't, it doesn't matter. If I go into a fight and do what I'm capable of, um, predict my way of fighting, go in there and fight like I want to fight, it doesn't matter who I'm fighting. You yeah. know, I, you hear this cliche a lot of, I'm well, training to beat the number one guy in the world, and it, but that's true. That's what it is. So anything you throw at me in the fight is the element of surprise and have to be ready for it. So it, yeah. it, 
it doesn't really matter, you know. Was it the case also for other matches where you weren't fighting, or specifically just overall? You know, did did each guy, each team, have an idea of uh, of who might be? Was it there a- might accurate? Have been some some idea, but I I think through the whole show, I think one guy nailed it the whole time. You know, I don't think for the most part people knew who was fighting the next day or whatever. I think yeah. who's been at one point watching video, he made a uh, accurate prediction mm-hmm. and uh, he was right once but out of all this you know all the phases of the show that i watched nobody really had any idea who was we were all you know that was the thing about this shows i think all 16 cast members were those serious fight they're serious fighters they're in it for the long haul they're in it to win or in mm-hmm. it to be number one i thought the discipline in the house was phenomenal i thought the concentration the motivation was superb everybody was focused to win, and uh, everybody was eating healthy, and you know, the, so it's hard to tell who was cutting weight in the way. You can keep that to yourself for the most part, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, especially you know, if everybody's got to stay on weight. To. Well, let's jump into the fight. Let's go into you know mm-hmm. the first round, Jay. What stood out for you? Well, overall, um, of course, Nate uh, Nate came away with the win. It's pretty uh, yeah. pretty decisive, eighteen to twenty. You know, scored on everybody's cards, uh, both rounds. Yep. The story of the match in general was Nate getting takedowns and punishing from uh, from top position. Uh, a lot of time inside uh, Baby Monster's half guard, and you know, throwing elbows and punches and stuff. Yeah. Now, Baby Monster was I thought it was interesting his counter. Because this was, to me, one of the most compelling matches of the uh, of the season so far. Um, even though it was, you know, it was Nate decisively, but Baby Monster put up a decent uh, uh, decent fight. He uh, he was going for guillotine choke a lot, uh, working on that. And I think it was the uh, the first or the second one. I think it was the second one where it looked pretty tight on you, Nate. Um, that uh, the guillotine choke after uh, he landed the. Baby Monster landed a, a kind of a flying knee, or sorry, yep. flying kick yep. to to Nate, and it looked like he was threatening with that guillotine. Was it uh, pretty tight, Nate, or not so much? Uh, my memory of it, no, it wasn't yeah. tight. You know, I was able to flip out and move around, and if mm-hmm. it's tight, you know, there's not a lot of space for you to do much. Yeah. So no, I mean, I, I respect the kick. It, it did damage. It was something I'll remember. The choke, not so much. Yeah. Um, really good grappling from both guys on bottom. Baby Monster was constantly looking for stuff. Nate was staying in top position for the most part and able to land a lot of good strikes from inside the guard. But, you know, Baby Monster was, was wiggling around uh, in the second round, had this good, uh, briefly had a knee bar attempt, which I kind yeah. of was su- surprising actually to see uh, to see even potentially <laughs> take place on the show just because it was so much fast movement. Yeah, know? but I never felt, Nate, like you were in... I mean, it might have looked a couple times where you might have been in trouble, but he didn't. You didn't look like he was like you looked calm, cool, and collected to me. Yeah. The entire fight. Did it was. Yeah, was, I think the biggest difference in the fight between my second fight and my first fight was probably that I just kind of just took the moment I was in, relaxed, focused. Um, I didn't get too caught up in uh, excited exciting excited energy you know I, I feel like that was the big difference between the fight it was an absolute thrill to fight uh for the for the ufc to be in their octagon for finally i've been trying to get into the organization for so long and it meant so much to me and and it was nothing but positive energy but it was so much that it, it might have took a little bit of away from me that first fight just uh, for 24 hours prior to the fight i was just on cloud nine ecstatic just so just thinking in my head how great it is, you know, just all oh, this. I think it just, you know, it kind of had what I needed that reserve, but just wasn't there for me. And that was what I got out of the, the first and the second fight was that I had to come in, uh, just know what my capabilities are, but, you know, not get too caught up in anything, you know, no, don't get off, caught up in the emotions. Just, just enjoy it, be present in the moment. And, um, uh, yeah, I felt like that. So I, whatever it took to win, I was going to win. And, and uh, yeah, so I think in the chokes and, and even getting kicked in the face and put into a good team right away, it was just reaction, muscle memory. Then God took over, and I was able to do what I was capable of doing. I love that you mentioned 
you know, we know that you've been trying to get in the UFC for a very long time. And when you have a goal like that, you know, a large goal, and you've, you've been working towards it for many, many years, and then to be in that moment, you know, and, and to be emotional and to have, that is a very loud environment. I've been talking about it all mm, season yeah. and asking guys all season, you know, how much it affected them. Because that's when you really, when it, that's when it separates, you know, the elites from mm -hmm. the other fighters. It really does because that is your moment. Yeah. You got to take it and own it. Yeah. And it's awesome that you were able to, you know what I mean, get acclimated and and zone in, so to speak. Yeah. So that it didn't affect you in this fight. Absolutely. It was nothing but it, um, it was great. It was just it was just the best environment to be in if you love what you do, you know what I mean? I fought in regional shows where nobody is there and, and there was no buzz, there was no, you weren't getting anything out of it, win or loss. And that's how, I mean, for a you know, standpoint of getting better you are, but as far as like getting noticed and, and recognized for your efforts, I've been in fights where nobody cared and this was the complete opposite. So this was, this, this was put me at ease. This was peaceful in a way. This was what I've always wanted is to show my crap in front of a large audience and have an opportunity to get into the UFC. So for me, it was a pleasure. Um, really, some of the best, you know, memories of fighting were on that show. And um, especially, you know, your hand is raised and you see everybody's excited. And my favorite scene is when um, I'm in the middle and I, all my teammates around me and we just start kind of, you know, it's just that bobbing, that just like kind of like dancing, you know, just kind of like, yeah, you know, and just finally the, the warm is turned, as Dan Lambert said, you know, and, and it, it felt good. The excitement was there and everybody relished, the, you know, each other's presence. And and uh, that's what it's all about, man, enjoying the moment, you know, and not get caught up in anything else because there's a lot, there's just life will throw some hardballs and there's harder things out there to do than what we're doing. You know, this is a joy and we just got to seize the moment and enjoy every bit of it. And I felt like on the show, even in the loss, man, and how great after a loss too, you could have a fight eight days later, you know, and just get that bad sour taste out of your mouth and enjoy every moment on that show. Awesome. Oh, your attitude is amazing. Yeah. It's a nice Rudy moment there. Especially, yeah. I was going to say, just <laughs> just winning one, just on the level, man, of winning one, the big one for the team mm -hmm. and being able to turn things around. But, you know, as, as you said, the, the long road of trying to get into the UFC and, uh, uh, you know, didn't didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. Boom. Now it happens and you win the big one. That's uh, yeah. that's all. That's I almost literally. <laughs> exactly. interview. I'm sorry. What's that? What was that, Nate? Say that yeah, again. Go ahead, man. Well, uh, well you know, so I said I said this in an interview a little while ago, and um, and before MMA, I was interested in wrestling, making the Olympic team in wrestling. So I've been on a, this journey for so long, and I'm thankful at the end that getting close to the end that I can, I am in the still in the journey aspect, and I now realize how important and how much fun that is. You know, that's what the whole thing is about. Yeah, that gold medal or that gold strap around your waist is great the security for your family mm -hmm. but in the end you know that doesn't go that doesn't go with you you know it's how you live the moment and uh the road the journey has been phenomenal man i've been all over the world and met so many cool people and trained with the best and left my heart in a cage numerous times and walked out of the practice room you know losing 10 pounds of sweat, but never happier, you know, and I get to take my kids now into the gym and I don't want them to do what I do. I want them to just go there and enjoy it, but they're around good people. Um, another thing about this sport is every day we're trying to learn and, uh, there's just not many things in life where you're doing that, you know, and you have to do it in this sport or you're not evolving and you're going to get mm -hmm. taken out. You know, you're not going to progress. And, and that's the the great thing, you know. I mean, I'm in a spot where you have to evolve every single day, be better every single day, and uh, it just it's it's awesome to be a part of. And then I'm I'm doing it with the best team in the world. You know, I feel like America Top Team has the right pieces, the right people, and uh, it's just a great room, great atmosphere to be in. And that's the thing too. It's, I'm in that atmosphere every single day. So because we were in that gym. You know, I train with my, my boys every day, my boys and girls, you know. I mean, we're, 
we're team, dude, and uh, it was nothing better than fighting in front of all those people. Wow. Yeah. You, I, I was going to say, you, you covered so many bases there, man. I don't even know which, uh, <laughs> which of our questions you know, to go on. You, I, your thoughts? I, well, no, I just have a, I have a question in regards to the show and ATT versus Black, you know, Black Zillions. Were there any fights, Nate, that you felt should have been called the other way, that ATT should have taken them? Mm. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, I think that, honestly, I think if you go and you start the show right now, you'd have a completely different result. You know, I, mm. Just, and it, what th- one thing that's killing me right now is I'm hearing like injuries, excuses of, of injuries. You know, I, I I just read a article where the guy fought, said he hurt his shoulder or something. And we are fighters. I mean, I'm 36 and I've been doing this for 28 years. And there's injuries that I don't even I forget <laughs> that I don't, you know you just put them on the back. You don't think about them. And the worst thing I hate is excuses, man. Um, but our team was going through its struggles too. Yeah. It wasn't perfect for us. It wasn't, you know, we had obstacles that nobody knows about. And then we lost one of our closest dudes, one of the baddest dudes, Steve Montgomery, to a seizure. And he was a pivotal fight at that moment. We we needed him, and he would have stepped up and done his thing. And but there's no, they don't, they don't say nothing about that. And I just hate excuses. I think they're rubbish. You know. Are you talking about Black Zillions having excuses, or just excuses in the UFC in general? Uh, in general, but yeah, I'm talking about baby monster being an excuse for our fight. I don't like that. I've heard other you know, excuses. I can also say, yeah, the judges might have gotten some wrong, and I can say that there's some fights that I think we could have won maybe, but it, it is what it is now. You know what I mean? What can you do? I, I will credit those guys, Black Zions, they have eight very good fighters, you know, mm-hmm. but everything could have happened, you know what I mean? You know, it's just there's like so much, there's so many factors that people don't know about. But our team wasn't 100% healthy either. But we came in, we never made excuses. We, you know, we, if we lost, we come back and we give it our all the next one. I mean, just uh, excuses in general are just getting tired of hearing them. Yeah, if, if nothing else, I think you guys, give, given the, the streak that you faced in the first several, first, well, first half of this season, uh, there's certainly nobody can accuse you of, of excuses. You guys just continued to keep chugging along and, and going in there and uh, and, and what doing I love what you about could. our gym. I mean, just yeah. not, that's not in our DNA. You know, mm-hmm. we just we train hard every day, and some days are going to be ours and some days aren't. But it, it's the journey, man. It, you know, yeah. <laughs> you learn a lot from your losses. The best person I could use an example, is Steve McEmory. The guy is amazing with his positivity, but. He just losses to him are as good as wins. He's he's got this really crazy <laughs> mindset. But uh, how's that? You know, bless, That's that, bless that guy. I, he just he he'll get something out of it. He'll get something out of it. He'll to work on something that he obviously you notice more when you lose what happened. And yeah. He just feels like hell. You know he's young and he's gonna bounce back. I I love that mentality. You're, you're not gonna hear any excuses from our team. And I hope moving forward too that it, it, you know that that's just. I want to set that in mm-hmm. motion now that, you know, that's not our team. We train hard every day. Our time will come if we believe enough in it, you know. And it certainly did for Robbie Lawler, huh? Sure. You know, exactly. <laughs> you know, a good, great example. You know, that was four or five fights losing, you know, in the strike force, and it completely turned his career around. And he was always a stud, but, mm-hmm. you know, things happen. You know, we don't know yeah. his story, and he wouldn't make it. That guy would never come up with an excuse, you know? Nate, what do you, have, what do you have to say to the to all the people that talk about um, ATT being old school and a little bit dinosaur-like in their training styles oh. and approaches? <laughs> no, that, I think that was a reference to me. I don't think that was, you know, if they're saying that about our gym, they have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> We're cutting edge, you know what I mean? We're a democracy in our gym. There's an open forum for the fighter and the coaches to talk and, and voice their opinion. If they have a problem, we try to fix it. There's there's nothing really like our gym. I've been around. You know, if you have an issue in other gyms and you want to raise that issue to the to the, the members that can help, you usually will get denied. You know, this this gym, we're going to continue moving forward and learning and trying to be number one and, and doing whatever it takes to be number one. You know, and, um, yeah, dinosaur, that was just, that Johnson was trying to diss me, you know, and 
I look forward to him when he's 36, 37. He's getting damaged. And he'll know, you know, how effective, you know, how damaging those woods could be if you didn't deal with a mental giant like myself. You know, I mean, we're all going to go past our prime one day, man, and uh, it's going to happen to everybody. So, uh, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'll be long gone. You know, I'm not going to care about what he's doing in the end yeah. of his prime, but he'll hopefully will remember me, you know, because we will all get there, you know. I want to talk about that a little bit. You just, you know, you mentioned earlier that uh, you know guys, uh, guys kind of turning things around, and and you as well as it relates to you, you know, on the show and and maybe on Tough Talk afterwards. Um, you were talking a bit about this being kind of, uh, I don't want to quite say a, a last hurrah, but twenty or sorry, thirty six, and on, on on the other side of your career, and you know. Not having, uh, not having kind of the uh, a long future anticipated, but to that end, you know things like Robbie Lawler, certainly the story of Andre Arlovsky turning things around. I mean, this was a guy that yeah. had been knocked out numerous times and, and written off really by everybody in MMA and said this guy should retire for the sake of his brain, if nothing else. <laughs> and yet he comes back and smashes full is and is now back in like the top five, I think, in, in the UFC. Um, that's got to be inspiring to you to a certain extent, I would think, that there's not, you know, just because you've got the numbers, you know, kind of the, the, the notches on your belt, as it were, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're out. And I suppose... Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, Henderson's another one. But mm-hmm. Rowski was a good one because he, he's shown every fight that he's still learning. His learning curve's quite, quite mm-hmm. large and... He, tactically and technically, he's improving still with every fight. Hendo, not so much. You know, Hendo, he relies on an age bomb, you know, but yeah. uh, he's still fighting at 44 and he ain't going to quit, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, as long as you believe, and I have a healthy lifestyle, I've never relied on any uh, PD, so mm-hmm. uh, that that's another thing I'm kind of looking forward to see what happens with that, like <laughs> what, kind of, what it'll do to the mental aspect to a lot of these fighters that are using, because once you're not, you know, it, you know, yeah. it affects your, your way, your mental state, you know, and, and uh, mm. yeah, so maybe I'll be able to compete with some of these guys, you know, uh, a, a less uh, average number, because you know, I'm sure not everybody's going to equip well with uh, not being able to use, us, you know, PDs, but I don't care if people do either, you know, I uh, kind of getting off issue here. But, no, no, uh, I was going to uh, actually uh, ask you a question about PED since we're on it. Um, what do you think about, you know, the commissions and, and uh, the sanctions that they that they have put in place? Is it pretty stiff? They are strict, man, but good for the UFC because, uh, you know, in, in wrestling in the late 90s, uh, you had a couple of wrestlers cutting a lot of weight like people are doing now in the UFC, and then they're using creatine. And it was basically zapping their lever, and it, there was a couple deaths, and they changed the whole weight cutting, how how that is practiced. You know, there was one hour weigh-ins instead of twenty four hour weigh-ins. And it was just a matter of time in MMA, somebody you know could pass on, you know, either PD use or extreme weight cutting. Um, so I'm glad they're doing something about it now, I'm nipping it at the bud, you know. And, that's the thing with the PEDs, you know, you get on them, but uh, for me it doesn't matter because maybe you're going to get some mental strength, but regardless, you're not going to outdo somebody who truly believes and feels. It's yeah. hard to mess with somebody who does it right, mentally believes, and doesn't need that crutch of um, a steroid. You know, that guy is always going to be the hardest guy to beat. You know what I'm saying? So whoever wants to use PEDs, whatever. But for a health standpoint, I'm glad they're getting rid of it. Plus, the thing with PDs is young people believe they have to use them because, you know, older people might be using them or they just, it's the current trend. You know, your top five mm-hmm. or maybe three of them, top five are using PDs. Maybe they'll make the seventh, eighth, and ninth person to use PDs. So getting rid of it, making it strict now, if, if, if somebody gets caught and be reprimanded big, might deter some of these guys from doing any of this. So uh, that's good. And another thing is once you're on it, you don't just stop, you know. So, yeah, it's going to change a lot of things, I think, you know. Yeah, I think it definitely. And um, I know I, don't, I can't remember the name, but I just saw somebody got caught and they've ban- been banned for three years. I can't remember oh. the name. I don't know if you saw it, but... Uh, uh, Sh- Shamalayev, right? Shlomenko, maybe? I, I don't Alexander know. Alexander Shlomenko, you're right. That. No, I, yeah. I, I misspoke. Yeah, it, Alexander Shlomenko. I thought I heard that yesterday, but I haven't really 
Yeah. I shouldn't have just said that because I really don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't I, quote I, us. <laughs> I believe it was. Well, it's, a, um, it's a fighter outside of the UFC um, of, of a decent name outside of the yeah. UFC who was busted for a, I believe, a steroid. I'm trying to remember which one exactly, but mm. three years, yeah. which three years. really that's is. a long time. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a career. I, it was in Bellator. I think that was like the California Commission. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the yeah. California. So now uh, the commissions are doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge, you know. Well, Nevada and um, California are really close together in terms of their, their governance, you know, and I think when uh, NSAC, uh, Nevada State Athletic Commission, came down a couple a couple weeks ago, I think, less mm-hmm. than a month ago, and, and laid out all of these yep. strong, uh, yeah. you know, strong fines and, and penalties and suspensions. Uh, California followed suit. It doesn't surprise me at all that California saw, followed suit. And given that, I, I, we're going to see stuff like that spread because you don't, from the perspective of the state athletic commission, you don't want to be the guy that lets people come in and say, "Yeah, sure, we're not yeah. going to test you. Yeah, we'll give you a slap on the wrist." I, I, I mean, we're getting way off topic for a second, but like, I just can't even imagine as a fighter, like, you know what the sanctions are, and mm-hmm. how are you? Th- how do you possibly think you're going to get away with it with you know Olympic level size testing now? It yeah. just blows well, my there, mind. There are always going to be a couple guys that get away with it. You know, there's there's always that. Yeah. You, know, you have the money. You're going to have. You're going to. There, there's always going to be ways to beat the system, but it, it'll be less, quite a bit less than what it used to be, yeah. you know, because not everybody has the right. It's going to change the game a lot, and it's going to. Ch- what's really going to be interesting, I think, from casual fans' perspective, is how much it changes the names. You know, we we're used to certain names that we consider stars and the top in the world, and mm-hmm. I don't personally have any opinion who who is or isn't doing doing uh, on, on PEDs. I don't really. Maybe I should think, but I don't really think and analyze about that. Yeah. But if if the numbers are correct that as many as possibly 50% of guys are on some kind of PED, and these uh, these statutes and these um, you know penalties come out, a lot of guys are either going to take some time off and cycle off and then come back. The um, smartest thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah, it doesn't make it easy. I mean, it's almost the same as, as a suspension. You know, or they're going to get busted and we're going to see them go away for a couple of years. Now, what's the effect of that? That means that there's going to be more slots open. And guys lower level, guys that are ranked lower level or lesser experienced are going to rise up the ranks that much faster because they've got to fill those slots, you know? Especially. Which yeah. is being we're going to see a, a new crop of guys that are going to be cleaner. I think that's going to be the... Uh, the end result of yeah, the, the one too is man, making money is great, securities, but man, overall health, dude, being around here, that's why I never really cared to get involved. With, you, we don't really know the side effects. We don't, you know, nobody really knows what it's gonna, how it's gonna affect your body. Yeah, you know, we don't have long-term studies on it. You know, and, yeah. and that was enough to make me really. I don't care about the money that much. You know, I, mm-hmm. I. Uh, I like also being attuned with my body, knowing when it is hurt. I don't want to numb that. You know, I, I like knowing the feeling of being injured and knowing how to deal with it. You know, I think really that is the best remedy to take care of all your. And that's why I think I'm thirty, almost thirty-seven, and I'm pretty damn healthy, man. And I yeah. eat healthy. I live a you know a healthy lifestyle. And uh, when I'm injured, I take the time off now. I, I just think if you're, you know. Mm-hmm. Them in your body, you just don't know, and it's fucking. How much stress are you putting on your ligaments and joints when you, you know? It's just. Uh, I'm glad they're getting rid of it. Just it's good for every individual. You know, we don't need that stuff. You know, let's do this naturally and find out who the best person in the world is naturally. Mm-hmm. Safe too. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah. Um, switching gears a little bit. I know that um, you know on the show. Kamaro told us last week that, you know, they don't show that there was a lot of fun, playful moments that the cameras captured, but, you know, for whatever reason, didn't make it to air. Do you have any favorite moments, you know, having fun on, on the show with the guys, anything that stands out to you that you could share with us that, that we haven't seen? Um, like hanging out in the sauna well, with Tyrone yeah. Spong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Kamaro no, was right with that. It's, that's the funny thing about reality TV, and they had cameras 24 hours a day, and they still miss unbelievable footage. It's amazing, you know. Yeah. Um, I think the heart-to-heart talks, you know, with the coaches, you know, and the, the teammates, you know, there was just the, that element's gone. It didn't, you know, that's hmm. the true drama, you know. And yeah. 
I had moments like that where you just have a good conversation with somebody, um, either coach or teammate, and uh, stuff you need to hear, and that probably the masses should hear just just because of to educate them. Better. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I know yeah. in past seasons they've shown some of that, and I feel I think I I can't speak for you, but I feel like we are on the same page on this. We wish we had seen more of that this season, more mm-hmm. fun moments, more personalities. Yeah. Those heart to heart talks, which are you know deep. And yeah. profound sometimes. And, and yet they're effective too. It's really what makes or breaks a person or a team, you know. And yeah, that element of it would have been nice to see a little bit more of the, the training aspect, you know. But maybe, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it isn't universally appealing. But um, that, from my standpoint, I had a day where um, I had a hard day one day, you know, and I had a very good uh, talk with uh, one of my teammates and coaches and, uh, I'm glad it wasn't because I was fucking, I was a little missy eyed, you know, and, hmm. and, um, and it was what it is, you know, it's the sport, you know, and uh, sometimes you need somebody to help you along, you know, and it would have been a great camera moment. And that's an example. I wouldn't have worn that on TV, obviously, because I got a lot of pride. I'm a man. But, <laughs> um, Tough fighters. You know, but it's what it, that's what makes our sport great, you know, is those moments when you're down and somebody helping you up, you know, and, yeah. you know that wasn't. You know, yes, I mean, but that's, sorry. I didn't, Go ahead. No, that was basically done. I was just going to say that, I mean, that's what I love about sports and sports. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you want to see the highs and the lows. You want to see behind you the know, scenes. I mean, that's what you mentioned Rudy earlier. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, who doesn't love that, you know, on a, on a spiritual, emotional level, you know, you, that's what it's about. Hopefully it is, you know, that, you know, it's, it's the truth, you know. Do you think that so I I think the production crew was awesome, dude. They really yeah. they were a great bunch of people, and I think they did a phenomenal job. You know, I really yeah. do. And and some of that, you know, you are training, and to be honest, coaches don't want those cameras around when you're training too. Sure. You know, and you know, so it's hard to get those kind of moments as yeah. well, just because. Of do you think that we're s- with, with the show and the formula that we're talking about? Do you think that we might be serving two? kind of opposite masters here in that there's fans like us that want to see the drama and the pathos and go on the journey of a fighter, the ups and downs, the emotion, feel that. But reality TV, and the broad generalization, but a lot of it is so reliant on drama and crash TV formula. Do you think that that maybe we've passed that point, at least with the ultimate fighter? People are tired of it a little bit. I hope so, because... That route is kind of an uneducated. It's casual fans, drama. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, you know, I want something deeper, man. I mean, I'm tired of the same formula movies as well. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I want something that means something. You know? Oh, shut up! You know, you went to Jurassic World. Don't tell me different, <laughs> yeah, I man. I Transformers. Yeah, I grew up in that. Era, <laughs> but come on, man. You know, uh, it's more than that, man. Yeah. This is stuff with the the. Poo poo stuff, it's man. A, Just, the big know, difference man. between dinosaurs <laughs> and MMA, you right? Get to jump, man. You know, sorry yeah. for your show and all that. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, uh, if it ain't real, don't give it to me, man. I, I don't want this crap, man. Yeah. I'm going to take a second. I'm going to throw you a bit of a swerve here, man. But uh, yesterday, as we were talking, uh, as you we were watching uh, Tough Talk, uh, you kind of proverbially and literally. Uh, opened up your shirt there and <laughs> talked about whom I believe is yeah. a, a teammate of yours, uh, possibly Joe Westham of uh, Westside yeah, Wrestling yeah. Broncos. Um, you know, yeah, sorry. Oh, in, yeah. you know, in the spirit of what of what we're talking about here, um, I thought it's it'd be a nice moment maybe if you can uh, talk about Joe and and his legacy. You know, this is he's obviously somebody that meant a lot to you, That's and so uh, you know, cool. what's that? That 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 is so cool. It means a lot to me, man. Um, let's let's give yeah, him let's give him some airtime here. Uh, if you don't mind, man, uh, I'll show you a little bit. Uh, I'm, I want to know I more, man. From, I moved from California up to Oregon. I moved around a lot as a kid. I never really. I was always in wrestling rooms, but I always moved around a lot. You know, I didn't really mm-hmm. ever have any close friends. And uh, I got to Oregon, another freaking new place, and in Oregon was just totally different than California, and. Uh, I moved to a blue collar, you know, inner city, mm-hmm. you know, town, uh, school district, went to Parkwoods High School, and uh, 
And uh, I, that first year, I was there, I had to earn my freaking respect, you know, and I didn't have no friends that first year. But slowly on the wrestling team, there's just this nucleus that were just a bunch of good dudes. You could just, you knew it, you know. Hmm. And uh, we just grew up tight, man. And our wrestling team was the worst in the league. And slowly, <laughs> by, you know, each year, we, yeah, the doormat, I, that football team lost 30, 56 straight football games. Something ridiculous. Five, six, seven years. You know, we just horrible but there's just this freaking core belief in these guys just truth man good people man and i was just around really good i mean two of my best friends all these guys wwb are my brothers to this day you know i'd do anything for them you know and mm-hmm. and uh i mean yeah, so joe was one of your teammates they buy shirts you know freaking just a huge community of good people but um um, and that's WWB now. And uh, so Joe Weston was one of our most passionate, caring guys. He literally gave the shirt off his back. He was the glue of our community. Um, wow. Hell of a man, just a hell of a dude. A guy that there was no, he was just nothing fake about him. And uh, he passed on two years ago, and it just shook the whole community. Just, hmm. You don't want to lose somebody young, but um, it was an accident how he died, too. and. Uh, but I think everybody felt like him being gone. Maybe we'd, you know, you know, fall. You know, everybody would. You know, that that community would be gone. And fortunately, because the love of, for that guy, you know, we're still strong. It's WWB, and it's no longer like a wrestling cliche thing. You know, we thought of us. You know, we're, it's a community. We're, we'll, we'll always help each other out, man. We're right. man, we're all over the country too, man. But uh. Huh. Thank you for asking because I think it, it it meant something to me when I was 16, 17 years old. And to be able to talk about it 20 years later is something really cool. So yeah. Yeah, I can know, kind of probably, relate. I remember, uh, I mean, I feel the same way. My wrestling team sucked and I was even worse than that. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, you know, so, some of those guys, you know, certainly fond memories. I'm out of touch with most of them, but uh, I know that they certainly, you know, mentored me and kind of... Uh, um, Kind of, kind of gave gave some direction to me. Uh, give us some more about Joe. I'm, I'm curious. He was, if I understand correctly, he was a teammate of yours, correct? Uh, yeah, high school wrestling teammate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did he? Uh, he sounds like he stayed in the uh, in the area. Did he coach the team or anything afterwards? No, no. You know, he was kind of just a. You know, he uh, he kind of had a few different trades. He. Mm-hmm helped out uh, he was a bartender you know so he knew everybody you know and uh yeah he you know just you know he stuck in the park Rose area uh bought his mom and dad's house you know uh, nice. so this house we knew a man you know he he lived in there and, and uh but no i mean all his friends were from 15 i mean he just what was the uh, impetus was, for uh for doing the the shirt homage yesterday what, say that again? What was the impetus for for doing the the shirt homage? Why? Uh, well, why now? Because he, he means a lot to me, man. Just like yeah. I, mean, I have a lot of you know people who know me, man. I care for them, dude. I want them to know that forever. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, on this journey, it's uh, on this journey in this moment. I love a lot of people, man. I want I wanted them to know, you know, and I think that mm-hmm. he that was a good way of telling everybody I loved him because I don't know if I'm going to be on national yeah. TV again, you know. Yeah. And you so, will, my uh, friend. That's pretty clear what that was. But uh, what was cool about it is also say the producers over on that Tough Talk, they, uh, I just took my shirt off and I was, I was going to do it. I was going to go without the shirt. And they were like, no, you got to put your shirt on. And I was like, I'm not putting it on. You know, I'm going <laughs> to do this. And mm-hmm. they were like, well, how about we give you a few seconds to, you know, say what you want to say if you yeah. just put your shirt back on. And I was like, all right, but, you know, I'm the kind of guy that you say something to me, the words are bond, you know, and. I sure enough, it. they did it. Holding your own with the Fox <laughs> producers. I love it. You can always choke them out <laughs> off they air afterwards. They to the world. They could have edited that out easily, you know. And so, <laughs> yeah. Dad, props to those guys for understanding. Yeah, that know, was cool. It's cool that you guys noticed that and are talking about it, you know. What else do you talk about in life, man? I mean, at the end, I'm like, I got my kids, my family, and mm-hmm. my friends, you know. And it's pretty cool that you guys let me express that I love them all. You know, my AT teammates, my, my, all my wrestling uh, training partners growing up, all those people, man, they influenced me so much. It's, and that's the thing, you get a UFC champ, it's not just him. There's so many people that helped that guy. You guys know it as well. 
we got to do anything in this world without the help of others, and sometimes that's lost. You know, we almost mm-hmm. trounce on each other to get to the top, and it doesn't. Work, it shouldn't work that way. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. glad we're talking about this kind you, of thing. You know, I'm really impressed with the head on your shoulders, and I certainly hope that your younger teammates at ATT, uh, and they probably do look up to you, and I hope oh, that. Man. Thank you. I, they, they, I, the last couple of days, I can't believe how you know cool everybody's been, man. They respect me, and I know it, and I, I respect all of them. So I'm not worried about that, anyways. You know. I, you know <laughs> no, it's great teaching them about you know enjoying the journey because yeah. in life, with every in any any endeavor that you're pursuing, any career, it really is. You have to enjoy the journey. The journey is a destination. Such a cliche, but so true. Yeah. You, it's hard sometimes. You want to you want to get to that. You know, but man, don't pass up the today uh, yeah so, mm-hmm. sweet guys really cool you guys let me talk like this so you just go, go <laughs> oh no we up. enjoy having <laughs> you um i'm gonna switch gears this weekend you have many att uh team members fighting in hollywood florida the fights can you talk about that for yeah. a second yeah we had those visa issues you know uh with brazil so mm-hmm. they opened the yep. door here we are Jim's 10 miles from uh, the hollywood venue the hard rock venue so <laughs> they UFC was in a crash when they needed some help and ATT can deliver. We got a house full of freaking studs. And <laughs> they picked up a few of our newbies that, uh, you know, have been trying to get in UFC and uh, our youngsters. And there's some horses that are going to be on this card. You know, we got the Creep Creep, you know, Steve Montgomery's going to fight on this card. And he got his opportunities. So we're going to get to see him thrash. And he's, he's electric, man. He can fight anywhere. I got him. Sharon, too, is another one who's been. He's a 135er. He's something else, dude. And they're just the next wave of, you know, studs are coming up, dude. They're going to make a name for, for themselves on this card. And what an opportunity UFC has given our gym here this weekend. Uh, to tie this into the Ultimate Fighter, why do you think that the Black Zillions don't, uh, don't have very many fighters on the card? Or do they? <laughs> we don't know. It, yeah. It's about to some shit. <laughs> uh, well, they're just... They're not American top team. It's just, it's <laughs> I suppose if you know? nothing else, when uh, when the, when the chips are down and the the show going as it is, and everyone's pointing the finger at American top team, you can point the finger at this event and say, "Boom! Now what?" Right? I mean, my proudest thing for me after that was, you know, you know, I love that every UFC I have three or four teammates, two, one, four, but every UFC event I always got a teammate I can cheer on, dude. How cool is that? Right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> The main I mean, event. You see what I want about our gym, but uh, it's big. But yeah. you know, I love all these badasses all over the world training in our gym, dude. I hope we can keep continue strong when we move into that new gym that's three times long, larger than this gym we're in now. So yeah. <laughs> let's see what happens when, in two years, right? Is that when does that happen? Do you move? That I think is in October. We have a new oh, wow. gym opening up in October. How many different locations, ATT schools, are there in, in Florida? Because when I look, I don't know. Don't know. I don't a know. lot There's of them, like, huh? More than, more than five, I would say. Okay. All right. But, but the pro team is, the pro team all kind of migrates and trains uh, at your Coconut Creek school, right? Headquarters is Coconut Creek, yeah. Gotcha. Satellite gyms are great, you know, because yeah. the great coaches there, it, it, you know, it's just, it's a, I think we're, doing something right, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and that's really so our guys leave this, you open up their gym in their town. You know, that's a possibility maybe, but I hope they train guys to come to headquarters and represent, you know, ATT's mm-hmm. headquarters. You know, yeah. but, um, the main event for this cool. weekend is, of course, Leota Machida versus uh, UL Romero. Um, really right. interesting style style clash there. I'm, I'm not quite sure what I make of it because you've got Machida circling on the outside generally speaking and, and kind of stick and move bit evasive romero's got ridiculously heavy hands to complement a an, an impressive wrestling pedigree how do you how do you think that romero gets it done uh gets it done on this show i like to just see pressure just so yeah just aggressive pressure just so we don't see machine you know Point fighting around and around. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I hope uh, Romero puts us back in his cage and does work. I don't really know. I haven't worked in Romero's camp, you know. So what I have to say, mm-hmm. who knows what he's going to do, you know? But uh, he's a freak, you know. I want to say something about Romero. He uh, he's from Cuba. 
I had a world champion wrestling coach at Oregon State University, Les Gutchins, in the late 90s, who was phenomenal. Romero and him were rivalries in the late 90s in the world, you know, in the world scene, you know, top hmm. three, two of the wrestlers in the world. And that was the late 90s. It's 2015. Let's talk about age. I mean, he's an older yeah. gentleman who's getting his work done. So yeah. who knows what your prime is, you know? <laughs> who knows? Well, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. I was going to say, it's, like I said, it's a very interesting uh, clash of styles, but also an opportunity to see a guy who I think most casual fans, are they know about Yoel Romero. They may not necessarily remember the name, but as soon as they see him, see a clip, they go, oh, yeah, I remember this guy. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. versus somebody who's, who's yeah. been on top for such a long time, Leota Machida, and mm -hmm. is kind of, um, I don't want to say placeholding because that's not fair to Romero, but he's kind of in a tough place where he's got to continue fighting off these guys coming up from the bottom uh, to maintain yeah. for Machida to maintain maintain his spot in the top three in in middleweight. No, there's there's a lot on the line yeah. for both guys here. Middleweight, no, I think, boy, that top six in the middleweight division is yeah, some top dudes, murderers you know? row, right? Right. Well, we're yeah. gonna. Switch gears back to a tough wrapping up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, any anything you can tease us with, Nate? Boy, I, <laughs> I do not want to get in trouble though, right? I mean, <laughs> I want to because I'm tired of this freaking team. This other team we have to talk about on a weekly basis, but uh, I, you know, I, I think the last uh, two fights are exciting. I mean, that's really the biggest tease. They're good fights. Nobody's going to be complaining about. Um, Lackluster performances. Let's just say that. They're nice. Two very good fights. You know, good one thing just occurred to me beforehand, and it's kind of maybe we can talk about it more with the panel next week. Is um, shoot, why um, with a regulatory body, it's just occurring to me. Tell me, tell me if you know the, the rules of this. In California, fighters. All fighters that fight automatically get suspended for, I think, five days or so. They're not allowed to fight five days after, regardless of win or lose, regardless mm -hmm. of how it happened, um, so that their body has some time to relax. Mm -hmm. It's just occurring to me, schedule-wise, how how this might have, the, the shooting schedule of Ultimate Fighter would be affected by that rule, if that rule was applied in Florida as well. Do you know offhand how it was? Like, Because this is a, sh a short shooting schedule and therefore you guys are the turnaround time for your fights is pretty severe um yeah was there was it because it was only two round exhibition matches technically or uh do you, yeah do you... i think that's a good answer right there you know okay <laughs> exhibition so it's not the same you know yeah never mind that you guys that's are going 110 percent there though gave the answer. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you said um well Really quick, your prediction, Jose Aldo or Conor McGregor? We're uh, asking you, Nate. I'm not yeah. answering I'm that one. Fight. I'm thankful that fight's happening. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Poirier is one of the strongest guys in our gym, and I don't think mentally he was up to par where he is today in that fight with McGregor. Mm -hmm. But McGregor showed me so much in that fight. I think McGregor is unbelievable. They keep saying what's going to happen when he fights a wrestler. I think he's an athletic freak, genetic freak. Um, I think he does just fine against wrestlers. I, I like him. I like his style. I like that he's brash. I like that he, I like mostly that he, he's confident and he backs it up. You know, um, I, will, I so think far. he's an awesome fighter. I think he's a killer. I think he wins it. Do you think ah. that the, okay, do you think that the rib injury makes a difference in the fight? It could in a lot of ways, but I think that's the thing, too, is I don't want to take nothing away from Aldo. Aldo is a bad dude. He's yep. been, uh, how many times has he defended his belt? I almost don't want to go against him because he's a humble guy, and I like that about him. But I like those guys that who speak their mind and back it up. I don't like yeah. people who speak their mind and then flop. McGregor ain't a kind of guy that flops. You know, yeah. He brings it. and I, I really respect that about him. I think... I would like to see him a player fight. I, I hope he goes wins the belt at 45, goes up to 155. Poirier does his thing. I want to see those two rematch at 155 for the wow. uh, lightweight title. I think Poirier is on another planet. And then we got a guy named Will Brooks. 
Yeah, our, divi- our, wi- our our fighters are very good at the top team. Um, but I have a lot of respect for McGregor. I'm not gonna be one of those guys that's gonna hate on this dude. He's mm-hmm. phenomenal. He's great for our sport, and he's a killer fighter, no doubt. Yeah, love it. Love hearing your thoughts. Yeah, man. Well, thank you. You know, thank you so much for taking time tonight to speak with us. I know you keep a very busy schedule, and you have a family. Um, it's certainly been enlightening and fantastic getting to know you and having you on the show a couple times this season. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys, man. It's, uh, it means a lot that you guys spend the time uh, going over MMA, giving fans MMA news. You know, uh, you're helping our sport grow, and uh, it's people like you that are making it happen. So thank you very much. Oh, you're your awesome. Time, huh? best of, we're humbled there. Best man. of luck to you. Thank you. Best of luck to you the rest of the season, well, and then, of course, in your career. To you guys as well. Take care, all right? All right. Take care. Have a good night. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see that, that one awesome. coming. I love it. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't think he had it in him. That's funny. <laughs> we talked a lot, a lot of different stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Nate. Um, uh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And, you know, what's fascinating is that he's not been on many MMA fans' radar for most of his career. Yeah. But that short changes like the the richness of his career clearly and how he's processed it you know he's had mm-hmm. a good career um champion and uh, outside of the ufc um but he's clearly got a lot it's not like he's just gone through these matches in this career and said all right now it's time for me in the ufc <laughs> you know he's got so right. much to say right. and you know he's carried he's really understood that thing about the journey is the yeah. destination i love his attitude mm-hmm. i mean attitude is everything and uh you know to be 37 Right, mm-hmm. 37. 37 as a professional athlete. Yeah. That's like you're up there. You're yep. up there, and he's look what he's still doing. A yep. mad respect for that. He's if, still, if nothing else. Yeah, he's still running up the top of the hill here. I, it's yeah, just That's impressive. fantastic, really. Um, wow. So it's 300, 200 now. Going 300, into next 200. Week. We have two weeks left, guys. Yep. And something can happen, and I feel, I still stick to my guns. You were saying last that you think you I know, I swerved. thought Black Zillions were totally going to take it, yeah. but after listening to Nate tonight, it's like, ooh, maybe they, maybe they win next week, and then it really does come down to the final week. But yeah, yeah, I think it, I don't know. I think it is going to come down to the final week, regardless. Um, well, that makes for better TV. Yeah, and, and who knows... <laughs> God, who knows what's going to happen that final week because you've still got the finals. On yep. July 12th, uh, I, ironically, I'll be on the in air Vegas. here. Uh, yeah, in Vegas, correct. I so, might be there. Yeah, those of there. you on the West Coast, it's you know, it's a hop, skip, and a jump, and yep. tickets are available, I believe, for that, uh, that event. Yeah. Um, George Hermosa and I will be here covering the pay-per-view the night before, UFC right. 189. So we'll... Uh, <laughs> we'll it's going to be interesting. I, I don't know if we'll be... Get, maybe we'll have the laptop. We are the ugly laptop brothers. Oh, gosh. So maybe we'll just keep them open and, you know, talk about... Uh, the news and the results I'll as be, it comes in. I'll be periscoping for you from the event. That's event. it, How yes. That? Periscope and we'll Live. have it on laptop. Yes, there you know? we go. <laughs> Literally turn around and be like, and here's Surrey. I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you guys for joining us. Jay, where can everybody find you on social media? Oh, come find me at uh, farmersdaughter. No, no, farmersonly.com. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm not there either. No. Um, Jay <laughs> Tan 716. You know those commercials? I do. I've seen uh, them. Okay, yeah, yeah going to give that a shot know, but no. okay. um j10716 at of course the big three facebook twitter and instagram but more importantly get with my girl at tough daria tough enough uh, vote for her each week tune in on uh, on usa network um and follow her she's on she's on periscope she's on twitter she's on she's instagram everywhere. yes and facebook and i'm at suri serrano on instagram facebook twitter and periscope Thank you uh, especially to Nate Coy for taking time tonight to join us. And thank you all for joining us for another episode of The Ultimate Fighter here at AfterBuzz TV. We will see you next week. Feel better, Dad. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 